Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a makeup tag video. This one was created by Tara Brooke. It is called the Beauty Brand Tag. Now I initially saw this on Samantha March's channel, but Tara is the one that created it. So I'm going to link both of them down below. Make sure that you check them out as well. And if you're watching this as a creator, I highly encourage you to do it as well. I'm just gonna jump straight into this with the very first question. Think back to when you first started your makeup collection. Are there any brands you use then that you still use today? When I first started my collection, it was a whole lot of MAC. I mean, I feel like just about my entire face was MAC Cosmetics, and I definitely still use them today. I have a lot of their original brushes that I use, something that I use every single day, and you guys are always hearing me talk about it, is MAC Skin Refine Zone. This is something that I just cannot live without. I've never found anything that really holds a candle to this at all. What I do with this is I place it on my pores before I go in with my pore filling primer. This helps to control oil. It helps to grab a hold of that primer. It's supposed to keep your pores exfoliated and it's a spot treatment so you can kind of put it anywhere. So if you're oily right here on your forehead, pores, chin, nose, wherever, it's just going to help with longevity and oil control. So this is something that, I mean, I can, it's been in my collection for so, so long. When it comes to beauty brands in general, I feel like MAC has been in my collection the longest. Question number two, which is a follow-up to the first question. Are there any brands that you have moved on from? Now, this is not because of the drama or anything like that, but Kat Von D. Obviously, we know that she's no longer a part of the brand, but aside from all that and all the drama and everything that happened, I felt like I was really into her brand. I loved the Shade and Light eyeshadow palette. I loved so many products from her. I even think I still have some of her original split pan um, blushes that weren't so well received, but I just wanted to keep them. <laughs> I loved her brand so, so much. Her tattoo liner in Trooper was just one of the best ones, especially at the time. But I started to notice as time went on that things weren't as good as they used to be with some palettes I was having issues with. You know, it seemed like the artwork was better than the actual product. I remember the 10 year anniversary collection and just being completely disappointed in everything with it. That for me was the downfall and when I really started to just become disinterested in the brand. Again, aside from all the drama that we all know about, not getting into any of that, I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to question number three. Are there any brands you thought were so expensive that you never buy anything from them, but now you consider at least one of their products to be holy grail? If so, which brand and what product? You guys won't believe this, <laughs> but there was a time when there was no way I was going to purchase anything from Tom Ford. I, I remember just shaking my head at Kelsey, just being like, oh, I can't believe you bought that. Oh, it's too much for what it is, blah, blah, blah. This, you know, I hadn't even tried the brand. And I, <laughs> then I started working at Nordstrom, started playing with the products and started realizing the reason, you know, obviously you're paying for the name whenever it comes to luxury makeup, but also some of their stuff is just so, so good, and in my opinion, worth the price. It's discontinued now, but Coco Mirage, this palette right here, this is holy grail for me. I know that you can't get your hands on it anymore unless you just happen to get really lucky or spend way too much on eBay, Poshmark, or anything like that, <laughs> but this is amazing. I love it so much. I feel like I have such fond memories of using this on clients, everything. It's just one of the best palettes, all matte, except you know, it has the little tiny shimmer particles in this shade right here, but they have done away with this and redone the palette to be Mink Mirage, which is definitely more cool tone. This one's more neutral. Neutral, slightly warm, but mainly neutral. The shades in here are so pigmented, buttery, 
blendable, smooth. You know, sometimes mats can be like dry looking. This, there's just something special about the mats in here and the colors and just everything. I have a backup or two <laughs> of this palette because I love it so much. But if you're going to consider this to be a cheat, because it's no longer available, I have a second product for you. Even though I had really gotten into Tom Ford's makeup, I didn't get on the bandwagon of their fragrances for a while. I had to warm up to them. It wasn't until Sole Depositano came out that I really fell in love, but then this happened, and this is definitely my holy grail when it comes to perfumes. Oud Mineral is so unique. It smells like nothing else that I could possibly think of. And when I think of like how I would smell if, you know, like I had you know, gave off a, a fragrance, <laughs> that sounds so weird. Oh my gosh. Anywho, this is just me. It's me in a bottle and I feel just like sexy and sophisticated and just I don't know all the feelings whenever I'm wearing this. It is more of a masculine scent. It's very woodsy. If you like oud, you're going to like this. I, I just, mm, this is the best fragrance I have ever come across. It lasts on me all day long. I love it when I put on a shirt or a jacket or something like that that I recently wore this with. I put it on and I smell that lingering oud mineral. It's just, mm, it is so, so, so good. Question number four, what is a popular brand that you've never tried and don't think you will ever try and why? I don't have a good response for like the why. It's like in my head. It's one of those things that I just, I don't know. I feel like it's a little... Like I hear about it too much and I don't get it. I don't know, Glossier. Okay, I know I'm hearing you guys screaming at me already in the comment section, I'm sorry. I know that this is a really well-loved brand. The only thing that I've really been interested in is the little brow flick, but then I think, well, I've already got my Mac one. Um, so do I need it? No, I could try it. Uh, the cloud paint, I've heard great things of, but then again, I have the new MAC Glow Play blushes and then the Natasha Denona that I just feel like are so easy to use. And then I see those in tubes. I'm just like, I don't want to mess with it. I don't know. I just kind of feel like it's very hyped. And sometimes, not all the time, because I know that I fall into the hype a lot, a lot. I really, truly do. I fall in and I get excited about things that are hyped up, but there's just something about Glossier that just has not made me really want to make a purchase. That could change in the future, but as of right now, I'm just not interested. What brand perfectly encapsulates your current makeup aesthetic? Explain. So I don't think that any one brand does it for me. I kind of change things up. On the daily, I do prefer to be a little bit more natural, but I like, for there to be some texture or something on the eyes. I either do something on my eyes or a bold lip. That's just kind of like my thing. So I would say that overall, brand-wise, Charlotte Tilbury. And that is kind of, it's kind of strange because I know that she uses a lot of cream products and everything. And I know that I don't, but that's the kind of look that I'm trying to achieve, but with a different style. So I feel like the models and everything are so beautiful. I love the makeup. I love like that little bit of intensity and then the softness. There's just something about it and the skin is always so beautiful. I love that, but then I also love Linda Hallberg Cosmetics. And I have to say Linda Hallberg specifically, like her, her face is my aesthetic. <laughs> so it kind of like a mixture of those two brands is what I would think would perfectly describe me. Because I, if you look at Linda Hallberg's page, say on Instagram, you're going to see beautiful skin. And then you're going to see these beautiful works of art, which I used to do all the time. And now I I hate that. That's one thing I'd really like to get back into. I just feel like I don't have the time. Or these just masterpieces on your face, something you're not going to go wear out to dinner, but you just create them, take a picture, and then you wash it back off. Oh, it's, I just, it's so inspiring to me. And then the 
eye looks that she creates, I feel like I get a lot of joy out of creating things on my eyes. That is where it's like my canvas. That's where I get the most inspired. So if I could do anything, I would just combine those two brands and it would just be perfection. Question number six, are there any brands you haven't wanted to try purely because you don't like the packaging? I have actually talked about this before and I have now since tried the brand. <laughs> and I don't necessarily think it's a brand. I would say it's the actual products. <laughs> Let me get a few that I have still in my collection that I have not Hold on, I'll explain. To be really specific, something I did not want to try because of the packaging alone was Benefit Hula. <laughs> I had heard so many things and I felt this way from day one. I remember talking to somebody and them saying, oh, you should try Benefit Hula. I was like, I can't, the, the box packaging really gets to me. And that was years and years and years and years ago when I first got into makeup. Hula's been around for such a long time. Now they have different shades, which is amazing. I still couldn't do it. They came out with Hula Light. People were raving about it, still couldn't do it. And then I finally, finally did it. And I, <laughs> it's the box packaging. It's just, I don't like it. I really, really don't like it. I would love for them to just get rid of the box packaging. That would be great. I'm not a fan of them. This is Benefit's Cookie Highlighter. Now, I originally tested this out not in the box. I tried it in one of their palettes and fell in love. I am wearing this right now. And I need to depot this, but because I still have one of the palettes, I can just use the palette. But when I go to use this one, I used it today just because it was convenient. I didn't feel like digging out my palettes, what I have on my cheeks right now. I'm going to depot it. And <laughs> this is what I did with Hula and Hula Light. These bronzers are amazing. They are everything that they are hyped up to be. This is the perfect matte bronzer. This looks like it would be my <laughs> like <laughs> a powder for me, but I promise you it does show up, especially during the winter time. I love mixing them. I love using Hula alone. I have actually had several of you send me Hula and Hula Light. I thank you guys for that so much. I go through these actually pretty quickly and I have backups now, so I appreciate it so much. But I just take them and uh, I, sh I don't remember what video I showed, but basically you just kind of pull at the packaging and it kind of will fold down and then you can literally just pull the pan out, get the glue off the back, and then they are magnetic. This is a makeup forever little palette here. I'm gonna show you, try not to break one of my nails. <laughs> This right here is Hula, so it came in one of the smaller ones. You can see the back has like a little bit of glue still left on there, but it goes into my palette just fine. And then this is Hula Light, and I was able to get all of the glue off of it. But that's the only brand that I can think of specifically that there are products that I just didn't want to try because of packaging. This one is so funny to me because I'm so guilty of doing this. Is there a brand you've only tried because their packaging lured you in? If so, were you happy with the actual product? <laughs> Ah, yes! <laughs> this happens to me all the time. And I'm going to talk about the most recent thing that I talked about in my purchase of past. And I was trying so hard just to not get it. And then again, Samantha March. I feel like I'm talking about her a lot recently. I just, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Anywho, she was on Instagram and I saw her applying this and I gave in. And somebody said, Mel, just get this stupid bronzer. And I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> ah, this is the two fake. I have so many things from this collection that they have done. They've done this so cute, the Glover. I think there's Clover and all the stuff and stuff. But this is the most recent. I'm wearing it today. And I've got to tell you that I like it. So this is, again, a brand, but... I can't say that an actual, just a brand in of itself that their whole packaging lured me in, but just products in of themselves. So those were the ones that I'm going to go over this. And I had used this all over my face. I was going all in this and it still has the puppy face. And yes, I did buy two because I was concerned that the puppy face still would not be there. I wanted to actually try it. And I knew that if I only bought one, that I wouldn't try it because I would want it to stay this cute. There's something about 
the whole line that they are doing with the puppies, the too cute and everything that I am obsessed with. I don't know if it's because I just love little puppies. I mean, my little Charlie is sitting right here on her heated blanket. She's always here. If you guys are wondering where Charlie is when I'm filming, she's right right here. I'm not going to disturb her because she is sleeping. I also got this little eyeshadow palette right here. Again, you can see the little puppy. And I liked the shades in here. This performs just fine. And I got <laughs> this one. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. I can't. I love it so much. And then this palette worked out for me as well. Uh, what else? Okay, and then I got the highlight. This is something I bought two of as well. So I have like a little stash in my closet of things that are just collectibles that I only buy because I want to collect them. This one obviously has been used. You can see it's a little funky. That's why I had to have two. And this is the highlight. It even has a little puppy imprint. I'm not sure if you can still see it because I have used this. I don't think this is a, like a must have or anything like that, but I do like it. So all the things that I've gotten from Too Faced just because I wanted the cute pu puppies and stuff, I've liked all of them. So I can't complain. Moving on to number eight. Some would say drugstore and mid-range product prices are starting to overlap. So, so true. What drugstore beauty brands are guilty of making this happen? And what are your thoughts on rising drugstore prices? You guys know that I typically stay more on the mid, high to luxury side, but I do test out drugstore stuff every now and again. And I'm in Walmart a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And I have seen just passing through the aisles trying to get my Kiss Ritzy lashes, um, Neutrogena, Physicians Formula, L'Oreal, I will look and I will see foundations being 15, 17, sometimes upwards of $20. And I'm thinking, wow. And even some eyeshadow palettes, NYX, I remember them doing an eyeshadow palette. What was it, $30? I don't know. I remember trying it and it was terrible. If I, I think it was like the Fire palette. I, I don't remember, but it really drew me in and I purchased it and I was not happy about it. I I don't know why the prices are going up. I think they're possibly they're doing it just because they can. And a lot of the times, you know, I, I kept, talked about so many times the price of Mac Fix Plus. I just went to go get a mini because I was going to be traveling and I wanted something to hydrate my face in case I needed it. The mini was $16. They used to be $10. The full size is $28. It used to be $20. And I'm just like, oh, mind blown. So I think that happens, you know, across the board when it comes to makeup products. But when I see a drugstore item coming up that high, it just makes me want to go more towards indie brands. That is my mindset. It's like, I don't want to spend the money on that. I'd rather go and spend the money on indie brands, which are, can some of them can be a little bit higher, but I'm just like, these indie brands are killing it. I don't want to spend my money on this. I'd rather spend my money on this. That is my thought process behind it. With anti-consumerism and an eat the rich mentality starting to take hold of the beauty space, are there any brands you still feel loyalty towards? If so, why? I definitely feel like I used to feel loyalty to brands. Tom Ford, Natasha Denona, Pat McGrath, I would say, are ones that I really, really was just extremely loyal to. Now, Natasha Denona, you guys know that <laughs> I've had several times where I'm just like, I hate this, but I still purchase and purchase and purchase. With Pat McGrath, it took me having some bad experiences this past like holiday season to kind of make me start thinking about things a little bit more. And then Tom Ford, when they redid the, the eyeshadow palettes and uh, they feel, I feel like they've been releasing more and more of the same. I feel like my loyalty, like my blind loyalty to these brands are kind of starting to dissipate. I feel like with eyeshadow palettes and stuff like that, I'm more inclined to just go ahead, purchase and review it. Because again, creativity wise, it's something that I love to do. But with other things, I'm less likely to pick it up if I know it has something that it's going to irritate my skin. I'm still practicing that because <laughs> there are times where I instantly go to look like say, for instance, the Pat McGrath powder um, there, she had a concealer and a powder come out and 
I knew that the powder had cornstarch in it, so I did not go to put it on my eyes. I decided to not purchase that product. And I did. I know I could have gotten views and this and that, but I was just like, I don't want to purchase something that I know is basically just going to go to waste. And I'm not saying that I am perfect. I That's why I haven't really wanted to talk about it because I kind of feel guilty because I know at the same time, I just purchased the Luminous Silk Concealer. I didn't think about it. I didn't look at the ingredients and it had something that broke me out. So now that is going to my mom. I'm trying to not be as loyal when it comes to things that I know I'm not going to use. Obviously, my job is to review things, and I really enjoy reviewing things. So if there's something that people really want to see, and I know that I can give it to somebody else afterwards, I still will probably do it. But for the most part, I feel like a lot of my loyalty has gone. I don't feel like I'm loyal to the point where I'm going to, you know, say something that I don't mean in a video. I'm not going to tell you that a product is good if it's not. I've always been that way. I never felt so loyal to a brand that I would risk my reputation because I'm here to tell you guys the truth, not to make any brands happy. But anywho, I feel like I could go off on a whole tangent. So I'm just going to move on to the next question, which is have you ever felt betrayed by a brand? If so, what happened? This is so relevant right now because I feel like people are really opening up their eyes to this going on with brands. My latest one is the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. So I guess you would say Tarte is the one that I feel a little betrayed by. The reason is I used to use this right here every single day. I would wear it on top of my MAC Skin Refine Zone and this blurred out my pores, absolutely loved it. And it is the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. They changed the formula, didn't let anybody know. And then it's not the same. It's not the same, obviously. I personally feel attacked because that was something that I used every single day and now it doesn't work for me, but it's okay because I love my Milk Makeup Blur Stick but that kind of shortens the list for me. I used to have two that I liked, <laughs> the tart one and then the milk one. Those two in particular would not break me out, would not clog my pores. And now that one, it, it just does not do the same. My problem with this is I feel like you should have to say when a formula changes. I don't think it has to be like a public announcement or anything like that, but at least on the website where you're purchasing from or in store, a sticker that says new formula. It's up to you after that to look at it and see if it's still something that you wanna buy. But all you have to do is say new formula. I cannot stand that it's just okay for brands to constantly be changing things and not letting the consumer know because there's things that I repurchase regularly that I'm not going to think about. You know, if I went to repurchase my MAC Skin Refine Zone, I'm not going to look at the ingredients. I already know it doesn't break me out. I already know that it does an amazing job. So unless I'm told that things have changed, I'm not going to look for it. And I think that is wrong. And I know that it says on websites and everything that, oh, ingredients may change or da 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 da. That's not good enough. I think it is deceptive. That is something that I feel is a little bit on the betrayal side because it makes me not trust. And so yeah, again, I could go on a tangent. Number 11, are there any brands that you feel give off exclusivity vibes, making you feel like you aren't cool, rich, or pretty enough to buy from them? If I was gonna pick a brand that I feel like, and this is something that I won't purchase, I just refuse to because I think it's a, outrageous. Louboutin makeup. I don't feel, I feel like it's a, oh, if I have this hundred dollar lipstick, I'm cool. Or, and I'm not saying that if you have it and you love it, that it's bad. Kelsey has, you know, some of the lipsticks and they really are a great formula, but are they better than some of my other lipsticks? No. <laughs> so I feel like that brand of makeup kind of gives me that vibe of exclusivity. 
I just feel like, oh, if I'm wearing Christian Louboutin mascara, not that anybody would know unless you saw me putting it on or my lipstick, if I'm pulling it out of the bag, I don't feel that way with other luxury brands. It's very strange. And I own several pairs of Christian Louboutin shoes. They are some of my favorites. I'm not going to lie, but that's a whole different topic here. My shoe obsession is something else. The makeup though is just, I don't know. It just, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. What's worse, choice fatigue described as an exhaustion from too many makeup releases. Who I have felt that so many times or lackluster quarterly launches from a brand you're typically excited about. I think it's gonna be the lackluster quarterly launch because if I'm thinking about my favorite brands and I get really excited about them releasing something and they don't release all the time and then whenever they release something, it's like, and I know I'm not gonna see anything from you for you know another four months. I think that is worse because I like to have options. Sometimes it really does overwhelm me with the amount of things that come out, especially if I'm interested in everything, but it also gets my creativity juices flowing. Whereas if I'm disappointed in something that's coming out from a brand that I really, really love, it kind of puts me in a, "Mm, well, that sucks kind of mood. So that's what I would say. I think that the lackluster quarterly launch is worse. Number 13. Have brand trips or sponsored videos ever made you actually interested in a product or beauty launch the brand was promoting? No. Mm -mm. Nope. Not less. I mean, if I already was interested in the product, do I care if there's a bunch of sponsored videos about it or that a bunch of people went on a trip? Nope. I don't care. Do you, you know, whatever. That doesn't bother me at all but it doesn't draw me in either. So unless I was already interested in a product, all the videos in the world or all the sponsored trips and all that, I I don't care. I could, I really could not care less. If anything, if I wasn't interested in it before, seeing all that makes me less interested. Are there any indie brands you'd like to see sold at Ulta or Sephora in the future? Absolutely. And you guys know my number one, Sydney Grace. I want them to be sold everywhere. I want them to be able to be touched and swatched and everybody fall in love with them. And yeah, so that is my number one. But then also Kaleidos, I think that they are amazing and definitely deserve some more recognition. They have fabulous products and packaging. Oh my gosh, their packaging is killer. They get, they kind of give Pat McGrath a run for the money, not going to lie. And then I would also say, give me glow, give me glow cosmetics. And I think that if they were sold at Ulta or at Sephora, they would also have more product because their, their launches and releases sell out so fast so fast and a lot of people can't get their hands on them. I remember with my summer vibes palette, I had to wait for the second round to get that palette, but it also makes me question, okay, if they go into these bigger, you know, places, does the quality change? If the quality is going to change, I would write, oh, it's like, I want success for the brands, but then I don't want the quality changes because I've seen that happen in the past and that, that isn't good. That's, not, that's no good. And I understand that there's like all these little regulations and everything. So I want same quality and recognition for these brands in these stores. That would be amazing. The very last question, number 15, if you could give any beauty brand a rebranding, which brand would it be? And what elements of the brand would you modify? This one I had to think about for a little bit. I, I could I could name a few off the top of my head, but then I just kind of kept thinking and kept thinking, and I said, NARS. First thing we would change is quit putting Laguna and Orgasm in everything, and I think that they are starting to catch the drift. I feel like they are already starting this rebrand. I'm hopeful, at least. <laughs> and then... Quit with everything being the same, like all the stuff just looking exactly the same, releasing the same face palette, releasing the same lips over and over and over again. And it's just, I don't like that. And it it makes me purchase less. I used to purchase a ton from NARS. And then I went through this spell of just 
no, 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 I'm not interested. I feel like I've seen you a thousand times before. So, and not just in general, because I understand that brands are typically going to have their own version of the nude palette, of the coral palette, of whatever, you know, the blushes, this or that, whatever. I'm talking about one single brand repeating the same products of their own collection over and over and over again. And Mac is definitely guilty of this, but I've talked about that recently. So I didn't want to keep talking about the same thing. And I feel like NARS is definitely guilty of this. So I would change that. One thing I wouldn't change with them though, is how they change up the packaging and make everything really exciting with that. Something I really, really love about the brand. But I would say quit re-promoting and quit putting the same things or even similar shades in all these different products. But that is it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you go check out both Tara Brooke and Samantha March and anybody else who has done this tag. Again, I tag you all. I love you, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.